Hello and welcome again. So in this video we'll talk about finding large primes. And you might wonder why is this important. Well I mentioned uh, this in the last video but let's just review why it's important. So why is this important for the RSA, for this encryption? Now remember when we did the RSA so we have to find a public key and a private key. And let's recall that, that the first step to produce a public key and E, which is N, is the modulus, and E is the public exponent. And a private key D, which only Vobs knows, is choosing two large primes. So that's the first step. Now, we didn't go into the details on how to choose large, large primes. Of course, you can choose the large primes uh, within the hundred first primes or even the thousand uh, first primes because those primes are not large in the sense of the what it needs for the RSA because remember we have to choose uh, these two primes in such a way that when we multiply them this number n it will be extremely difficult to uh, factor or to find the prime numbers who made this n. So that's the key uh, thing here so that's why we want to talk about finding large primes. So let's recall how the RS, RSA key generation is. So the output that we need for that is a public key, which is N E, and a private key, which is D. And now this is what everybody knows, remember, and this D is what only Bob knows. And so that's how that's the exponent that Bob uses for decryption. Now the first step, as I mentioned, is you choose two large primes and then you do some computations after that. And the first one is basically just the modulus. The modulus is the product of the two large primes. Now in reality, what you want is P and Q should have approximately about half of the length of N. So now it would be bad if this P is large and for example, this Q is for example, the prime three. Well, that's not something that you want. You want both of them to be large. So we will assume that uh, P and Q have half of the length of N. So if N has bit length, 10, 24 bits, then P and Q should have roughly about 5, 12 bits uh, each. So about half of the length, basically. So that's what we want. We want to find these large prime numbers. And so what is the general approach in what we usually do in RSA? So the general approach will be something like this. We're going to use an RNG, which remember we discussed this a while ago, is a random gen number generator, something that gives me random number generators. So it gives me some number uh, P here, P uh, curve here. Now this number might be prime, might not be a prime. So I generate a random number, then I apply a primarily test here, and I'm missing there a T, a primarily test, and Basically what that test is, is just checks whether whether this number is prime or not. So basically what you do is the output of this algorithm, well there are many algorithms, uh, P is prime or P is a composite, so it's not a prime. Now this approach uh, raises two important questions. One of the first important questions is how many random numbers do we have to test before we have a prime number? Now that is important here because if I produce a lot of random numbers and it happens that I have to test lots, lots of them, or I have to check a lot of them before I get a prime, a prime, a prime number, then that will be bad. And how fast can we check whether a random integer is a prime? So that will basically be this algorithm here. So if this algorithm happens to be very slow, then this approach will not really work. So these are two important questions that we have to answer before we actually go into uh, generating two large primes. So let's address the first question. So the first question is how common, basically what this question is, how common are primes? Right. So if you choose one integer at random, what is the possibility of the probability that that number will actually be a prime? Now, before we go into the details of that, let me show you a couple of pictures that I have here. So this picture that I have here on, on the left, 
This is the density of the first 100 prime. Basically what that means is this. Here on my x-axis, I have the numbers. And here is just uh, from 0 to 1. So if you see a blue dot there, it means that that number that is right uh, above it is a prime number. So every time you see a, a vertical line, that is a prime number. So you see some gaps here. So in these gaps, there are no prime numbers. Now, they are not distributed uniformly, right? So there's some gaps that are bigger than others, and there are some primes, some places where you have uh, the primes are packed in, in some sort of sense here. Now, to see a little bit of more of a picture, let's look at the right hand side picture here. So this is the density of the first 500 primes. So you can see here a little bit better what's going on. So, um, so here we have, again, the blue lines means that every time you see a blue vertical line means that the number right here on the x-axis that is a prime number and whenever you don't see anything it's just a composite number or it's not a prime number. So that's basically the density of the prime. So you can see well there are some gaps there. How big are the gaps? Well we still don't know. There are gaps as big as you want them to be. That's for sure that, his, that has been proven. But what we want is basically when I take a number at random here on the x-axis what is the probability that I will get a prime number. Now, there is something that we have to use to um, do that and is the prime number theorem. I'm not going to say what the prime number theorem says, but this, uh, this thing that I'm going to write down now is a consequence of this prime number theorem, which is a big important theorem in number theory. So, once we accept that that's true, we, we can prove the following. The probability of an odd number, P, to be prime is this. The probability of that number being prime is more or less equal to 2 over the natural logarithm of the number. So it's a number between, of course, uh, 0 and 1. So the larger, the closer to 1, the larger the probability will be. Now, what do I say here odd? Because we're not going to check the even numbers because even numbers are all composite except for 2. And 2 is not a large number. Prime. So we're not going to consider 2 here. So we're going to take only numbers that are odd. So the probability of a number number uh, being prime is 2 divided by the natural log of that number. So that's the probability of, of finding a large a prime depending on the size of the number. So the size of the number will give me how much uh, that number will be a prime. What is the probability of that number being a prime? So let's look at an example here. So suppose we want to uh, we want the RSA to have a 24 20 48-bit 20, modulo n. So that means that my primes should be half of the size, as we mentioned earlier. So the primes p and q should have about 10 24-bit length. It's half of the size of n. So the probability of an odd number p of 20, 10, 24 bit length to be prime uh, is this quantity here, 2 over natural log of p. Now, p is at uh, the worst case scenario will be 2 to the 10, 24, assuming that p is a binary. Okay, so of course, 0 and 1, so 10, 10, 24. So that's the, the, the worst possibility. So approximately p is about that. So we can compute the probability of that number being a prime is 2 over the ln of that number. Because this number here is approximately, or the worst, the worst case scenario will be this number. Then this will be about 2 over the ln of this. 2 to the 1024. Now, there are, there's a property of logarithms that says that when I take a logarithm of any number to an exponent, this exponent comes here up front of the ln. So that's going to be 2 over 1024 ln of 2. Now, if you multiply these two things here, 1024 times ln of 2, this is roughly about 710. Not exactly, but it's roughly. Remember, this is just a probability to use. We're trying to approximate here. And if you simplify this, this is going to give me 1 over 355. What does this mean? So this is the probability of an odd number that is of size 10, 24 bit, the probability of that number being a prime. What this number really means is this. So it means that we should test 
uh, we should expect to test 355 odd numbers before finding a prime number of this length. Now, notice that this is not bad. I mean, this 1024 is quite not is quite a bit large a number, and we only have to test about 355 to just find a prime number. So it's not really bad. So the probability of finding a um, uh, finding a prime number is not is not awful. It's not bad. Now the probability, of course, of finding a a not number, a number to be prime, will decrease if I increase the size of my number. So if a p here is of size uh, 2048, of course this probability will be lower. But the way in which this is lower is not as bad. Is um, so as this picture shows, the probability of all integers being prime decreases slowly. That's the key part here proportional to the bit length. So a huge bit length, of course, is going to give me a slow probability, but it does not decrease that fast. So here, here you can see here the graph. In the x-axis, I have the bit length of the number, and on the y-axis, I have the probability of being a prime. Of course, as I as you increase the bit length, the probability, of course, of finding on being of number being a prime of course decreases but you see the way it decreases it decreases very slowly so it's not bad so so that's one thing so is it so coming back here to the first question that we had so let's go back here to the first question all the way back here how many random numbers do we have to test before we have a prime number not that many that's basically the the answer to that question there now the second question here is uh, how fast can we check whether a random integer is a prime? And the short answer is quite fast. So once you give me an odd number, it will be quite fast to check whether that number is a prime or not. So I'm going to scroll down here to that part. So the question is primarily the tests are reasonably fast, uh, meaning that in quite short period of time we can check that something is prime uh, up to certain certainty. So, so when we generate an odd number, we need to check whether that number is composed of prime. Remember, we have a random generator number, and then we check whether it's not a prime. That is not a prime or not. Now, checking that something is prime is uh, is not as easy as you might think. So, one naive approach of uh, checking that something is prime is factor that number. If you factor that number, it turns out that the only factors are one and itself then of course that will be a prime number. But that is a very inefficient way to check that something is a prime. So factorization, uh, as I wrote here, is something that is not possible if, the, possible if the numbers are too large. Even with modern computers today, we have really uh, good computers today. In the, uh, of course, if we compare them with the past, but even now, having these really fast computers, factoring numbers is it's not easy. If it were easy, then the RSA will not work because if I can factor a number very fast, then I can decrypt all the messages very easily. So that's not, that's, that's actually hard to do. And that the security of the RSA depends mostly on the fact that factoring numbers is hard. So factoring a, a, a number is not an easy way to check that this prime or not. So this is what I said here, factoring the number and deciding whether it's prime or composite are essentially two different questions. Factoring a number is essentially harder than deciding whether or not the number is prime or not. So they're very different questions. Factoring is harder because I have to find all the factors. Deciding whether or not a number is prime is not as hard as this one. It's actually a lot easier. So let me give you an example here. So to show you why is the difference between factoring and deciding whether the number or not is a prime. So let me consider this number here. So suppose I have this number that is 1 million factorial plus 3. This is a quite large number. And remember what this factorial here means. I forgot to put the factorial here. A million factorial basically means I'm going to multiply all the numbers from 1 through 1 million. So it's 1 times 2 times 3 and so on up to 1 million. I multiply them all and I add 3, that's going to be my P. If you go ahead and try to find what how many digits it, this number has, it's 
quite big, has a 5 million digits. So it's a quite large number. Now, even though this is a quite large number, I don't actually have to do much to check that that number is actually not a prime. So we can easily decide well, decide that P is composed, that it's not a prime. Because if you look at the number here, this number is actually a factor of 3 or is divisible by 3. So 3 divides that number. Why is that? Because remember, P is defined in this way, is this factorial plus 3. Now, this number factorial here is of course a factor of 3 because 3 is right here in this multiplication. And of course, 3 is a factor of 3. If you add two numbers that are a factor of 3, that gives you a factor of 3. So for sure, this number is divisible by 3. Therefore, it's not a prime number. You see how, how easy that is to decide. It's just almost immediate showing that this number is not a prime number. Now, factoring that number is extremely, really, believe me, it's extremely difficult with today's techniques. Maybe it's tomorrow, or maybe in a year from now, then we, maybe someone is going to come up with an extremely efficient way to factor numbers. That, but from now, this number is extremely difficult to factor. So deciding whether a number is a prime or factoring are two essentially different problems. And the only thing that we had to do is decide whether or not it's a prime. So it's not as that difficult. So if somebody tells me, is the number a prime? I said, no, divisible by three, that's it. Finding the factors is completely different. It's really not easy. Now, we can group primality tests, basically that's not factoring primality tests, into two different categories. One of the categories will be a deterministic, which basically tells me with exact precision that a number is prime. The other ones are probabilistic tests, that the answer with high probability. These are more practical. Now, of course, this always tell me something is prime or not, but these algorithms will usually take a long time. The probabilistic algorithms will take a slower, slower time. So therefore, are more practical. Remember, all these, all these RSA is about practicality. We need to check things fast. And the high probability is actually quite rather high. So what we're going to do is basically we're going to concentrate on probabilit probabilistic text of primality because they're more practical. That's basically what we're going to do. So in this video, it was just an introduction on how to find large numbers. There was no algorithms here. I just uh, basically just the ideas. In the next video, I'm going to be more specific about what kind of tests we're going to use. And I'm going to give you some examples about the probabilistic tests that we're going to use to check whether a number is prime or not. So I will see you in the next video.